this is Smokey the Bear. Do you know what you should do? Yes, you shouldn't set the forest on fire, you stupid human idiot. No, what you should do is listen to independent podcasts. Most podcasts now are on networks. It's the chic thing to do. So, instead of following all the other lemmings, listen to a podcast that's independently done. Like the one Mike Matthews does. Oh, I guess you're listening to it now. This show is clean, pretty much. Uh, 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 <laughs> Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 847. Hello, this is Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Today, it's the return of the much-loved feature News Random, where we hear some news stuff you won't hear on any other podcast. Plus, it's Madame Rutabaga, Valentino, Bison Bentley, and Google gets a little bite back from people tired of them spying on us. Mike's Daily Podcast. We'll find out what happened. And oh, I'm getting so tired of those Bible commercials. Easter's upon us. Mike's Daily Podcast. Some of you know about the singer named Jessie J about how she's so pretty and she sings and she's got songs they always play on the radio, but her music videos require a lot of money, so she had to pay. So glossy, so shiny, and they could make it so shiny, so nice, and they played it on Graham Norton's show. You know he's gay. Mike's Daily Podcast. You didn't know? Oh, do you have eyeballs, eye sockets? Well, everyone clapped when he played Mike's her music video. Daily um, audience. Podcast. British audience. Yeah. British television talk show audience. I mean, telly audience. You realize she's just lip syncing, right? If you go ape shit over this, wait till I introduce you to a band called Millie Vanilli. I liked Domino better when it was Derek and the. Look who just walked in. Hello, my God. This is my dad. on Jesse J. is so beautiful. She is. She's striking. And she's funny. And she was really good on Graham Norton's show. I love how Graham Norton throws together a bunch of different actors and people's. I think he had her on with Harvey Weinstein, which we were discussing that when Kai Alfred Hillig and Pete Jordan were here. And uh, because there was also the the guys from Broadchurch, Neil Tennant and the woman, I forget her name right now. I'll look it up right now. Olivia Coleman. Olivia. Yes. So they, it was a fun show, the, the talk show, the way he throws the people together. We don't really do that here in America. When, one, when the first guest comes out, he or she does their little spiel, and then they get the heck off the stage because they're like A-list. They don't want to deal with the, the, the uh, hoi polloi that's coming up after them. So they just leave. Now, I think people like Jimmy Fallon... They're trying to break the rules of talk shows or trying to keep them around longer, but we'll see. That's neither here nor there. Or could be over there. It's definitely over there in England, but it isn't here. Look who else just walked in. Hello there, Mike. This is Valentino the Parking Attendant. And this is Bison Bentley. Do you know that? Mike, so what you're saying there is that they shouldn't be applauding a music video day. Yeah, because she's just lip syncing. And there's a huge team working on the music video to make her and everyone else look really nice. And they're wearing, you know, really tight skirts, short one, tight pants, things, male fantasy type stuff. And I sh- I'll stop. Yes, please stop, Mike, right there. We can't take any more of your descriptions. Do you know that? It was a little much, wasn't it? Michael Matthew, maybe they are applauding the special teams that made the nice little video. Ooh. Yeah, okay. At any rate, this is fascinating. What happened is Google got some bite back because they lost a court appeal of appeal bid to stop consumers having the right to sue in the UK over alleged misuse of privacy settings. A group of users claim that Google bypassed security settings on the Safari browser to install tracking cookies on their computers in order to target them with advertising. One of the claimants called it a David and Goliath victory. This according to BBC.com. See more British stuff. 
The case revolves around a so-called safari workaround, which allegedly is safari, by the way, for you people that don't have any Apple products. It's that it's basically your way to do searching and go on the Internet there. I think I described that in, a, in as technical a way as possible. It's like your Internet Explorer, your Google Chrome, your Firefox. The case revolves around a so-called Safari workaround, which allegedly allowed Google to avoid the Safari web browser's default privacy setting to place cookies that gather data such as surfing habits, social class, race, ethnicity, and all of this without the user's knowledge. The Court of Appeal has ensured Google cannot use its vast resources to evade English justice. Yeah, take that, Google. You and your red, green, yellow, and blue. What, you couldn't come up with any other interesting colors? Why don't you throw in some peach? Love peach. The landmark case potentially opens the door to litigation from the millions of Britons who used Apple computers, iPhones, iPods, and iPads during the relevant period between the summer of 2011 to spring 2012. Hmm, do you think anybody used those products then? Google has already paid fines of over $40 million related to this incident in the U.S. It was fined by the FTC and separately by 38 U.S. states. They also got into trouble when they were doing their uh, Google camera thing where they go and they take pictures of uh, the, what's that, street view of all over the U.S., which I love that, by the way. But they bit our hands by also monitoring our Wi-Fi as they were doing it. So, yeah. What other British stuff can we throw into the show today? Oh, Downton Abbey. Like I mentioned yesterday, they're ending. And Benita was sad about that last show. She thought I said that downtown Julie Brown was ending. As in, I guess that she was dying. But uh, no, I meant Downton Abbey. I don't know how she confused the two. And also the brewmaster made spiky hair root beer. Which gave me spiky hair for a split second But now I'm happy to be bald again Bald as a peach No wait, peach has peach fuzz on it, doesn't it? That was a bad comparison Maybe a melon would be a better comparison He also made dirt root beer Which I will tell you right now It's got an earthy taste So this is the part of the show where I say If you have comments about what you heard about Google and England and England stories and Jesse J who's from England. You can also email me Mike's daily podcast at gmail.com. She's actually from Essex. Mike's daily podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section emails from email. Also email me there. If you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, Mike's daily podcast at gmail.com. We also have the website, Mike's daily podcast.com with links to where to listen to this show in iTunes. You can subscribe to the show there and comment on the show, rate the show there. If you do that, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity, which is what Smokey the Bear is trying to fight from happening. Independent podcasters from languishing in obscurity. That's his new cause. Also, you can hear us on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, MixCloud, Spreaker, Player FM, Ameristream Live. And I'm on the air in Connecticut weekdays, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., There's a link to where to listen to that at mikesdailypodcast.com. And tell your friends about the show through Facebook, the Facebook page. Like the Facebook page when I post a new show. Share it with your friends and more people find out about us. And we're also on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter and retweet us. We're also on Instagram, Yelp, and Tumblr. Where to find us at all those places. The links to all those at mikesdailypodcast.com. And the Amazon link. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through the Amazon link at mikesdailypodcast.com and we get some support from that. The blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews are also at mikesdailypodcast.com. News random. Here's some interesting news stories and fascinating facts for you in the segment News Random. And it appears there's a party two doors down. Actually, it's not two doors down. It's underneath. It's a restaurant underneath, and they're having a party. 
People think, oh, that's so sweet. You live in this cute apartment above your little bistro, says Jessica Bond Cutter of her three bedroom home above Bar Jewels. She says, in reality, it's a freaking nightmare. From the dining rush to the early morning bottle delivery, she says, it's so loud, it's insane. She finds solace in small conveniences a stolen nap before dinner service, a drink with friends upstairs while they wait for a table, extra storage space for restaurant linen. Bond Cutter's close proximity to the restaurant means that she's dialed into the extreme. I never want to put on my own music, she says. I can hear the restaurant's playlist clearly through the floor. And sometimes the bird's eye view lends itself to some eavesdropping. She says people will walk by and go, oh, I heard this place is amazing. Or, eh, there's nothing on the menu I want today. She says it's like live Yelp reviews. This according to San Francisco Magazine. And then there's Tyler Catalana and his wife, Chef Yella, who is hella hot, from the restaurant Mill Valley Beer Works. They nod off to sleep every night to the reverberating whir of the exhaust hood beneath their bed. They can tell whether it's a busy or slow night downstairs based solely on the drone of conversation below. We have to wear headphones when we watch movies to drown out the hum, Yellow says. But the newly married pair jumped at the opportunity to move in over a year ago. Tyler, who is also trained as an architect, gut renovated the apartment. The living arrangement means that Yella can take a break in the evening to have dinner with Tyler. And then there is flour and water in San Francisco. The decision to move into his two-bedroom apartment nearly five years ago was pretty rash. But Chef Thomas McNaughton said, I had broken up with a live-in girlfriend, so I moved in in a hurry. I didn't even have running water for three months. Still, after a spate of 16-hour days at Flower and Water, he found the relocation a no-brainer. On the downside, he walks through the restaurant to get to the stairwell to his apartment, which can make leaving the house in his sweats rather awkward and it can be difficult to enforce off hours boundaries as he learned the hard way when an employee walked in on him shaving in the nude but the setup has its perks he says i'll call down for a flour and water delivery every now and then where they make really good pasta and then finally there is Cezanne and the chef Joshua Skeens he says in this business you're in the kitchen all the time anyway he says and he lives above Cezanne he says though he does relish the 30 second commute he claims he doesn't place much importance on where he crashes at night when I'm not cooking I live a very simple lifestyle everything in my life that's complicated or special or fancy happens at work he rarely makes use of his home kitchen instead reading from the piles of books scattered around the floor of his apartment or practicing martial arts in his living room where he keeps a collection of swords, helmets, and gloves. Yes, everybody needs a little Michael Bolton now and then. Just a little. Going the distance. Weight loss victory. According to James O. Hill, co-founder of the National Weight Control Registry, most successful weight loss maintainers continue to consume a low-calorie, low-fat diet and sustain high levels of physical activity. And there are some successful habits, according to the Costco Connection. That magazine they throw at you as you are pushing that obnoxiously huge metal cart out the front door that's always impacted with people. 78% ate breakfast every day. Most choose walking as their preferred way to get moving. 90% exercise daily for about an hour. 94% increased their physical activity. And 98% reduced their food intake. Built on what has been learned from the National Weight Control Registry and patients at the Anschultz Health and Wellness Center, James Hill and his associate Holly R. Wyatt recommend these five rules for success. Number one, eat six times a day. 
three meals, and three snacks to provide steady energy over your day and help manage hunger. Number two, eat breakfast within an hour of waking up. People who eat breakfast end up eating less over the day because they're not so hungry. Number three, don't count calories, count portions. And number four, have the right mix of carbohydrates and protein at every meal. For at least three meals, choose vegetables as your only carb source. And you should also think about eating healthy fat twice a day, which means unsaturated fats such as olive oil or fish oil. I was born and raised in San Jose. I'm going back to find some peace of mind in San Jose. Men's Health Magazine analyzed 33 criteria covering areas of health, fitness, and quality of life. And San Jose took home the Manly Cup. San Jose. Men's Health Magazine asked Van M. to park a PhD and an associate professor of health science at San Jose State University to explain why San Jose is... America's best city for men for 2015, according to Men's Health Magazine. He says, Number one, the cultural norm is to walk and hike as much as you can. That explains the low heart disease death rate. A brisk walk can reduce the risk of cardiac calamity as well as running can, says Berkeley Lab researchers. Number two, with 18 community gardens across 22 acres, it's no wonder obesity rates are so low. And they got lots of farmer's markets. And finally, the city's ongoing initiative to add 500 miles of bike routes by 2020. That may be why San Jose cyclist fatality rate is below average. Do you know the way to San Jose? I've been away so long. As we go outside of Cafe Anyway here at the last place on earth, located somewhere in Pod Castro Valley, which is kind of close to San Jose, it's maybe oh, 45 minutes, depending on how Burt Bacharach is playing in the car, how, you know, that shows how fast we're going, huh? Uh. Speaking of Podcastro Valley, we had an event on Wednesday that was celebrating spring, and all these local businesses come out to promote themselves, all kinds of local, like real estate, insurance, gardening, the sanitation people were there. There's a bunch of food, restaurants, and whatnot, doing free samples. And actually, those last two things kind of made this picture. So the all the food st- stuff there, people were eating, and then they had to throw it away. Well, there were three cans that the sanitation district put out there, and there uh, we have this very strict rule here in Pod Castro Valley. You divide your trash between trash, which goes straight to the landfill, and compost, which they d- make into compost, which is then used uh, by you know farms and whatnot. And then, and I, I think it's actually sold as compost to major home improvement places. And then there's the recycling bin, which, of course, you recycle cans and bottles and plastics and whatnot. Well, people were just throwing stuff willy nilly in any can. There was no categorization. Nobody was using any discretion. And it made me upset because we already pay huge bills to for our trash. Our trash bill is big. And part of that bill is to educate other people to put the trash in the right spot. We pay a huge chunk of the bill goes to marketing, to education. And apparently it's not working at all. At this podcast Valley event, nobody was doing a dang thing right. So I had to show that picture to you. It's kind of funny. And it's there at mikesdailypodcast.com. Michael Maestro, I'm so happy to see a picture of trash. Ooh. But it, it's not a picture of the Kardashians. Thank you. Good night. Next show, it's. A, I wouldn't mind a picture of the Kardashians, by the way. The the Bruce Jenner kind of scares me, but next show it is a very special, award winning, talented singer songwriter named. 
Katie Garibaldi, and she's from San Francisco. And I'm actually going to go to San Francisco to interview her, which is a nice little 40-minute BART ride away. So I'll be doing that on the segment Into an Interview. Plus, we'll hear from Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike's TV Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.